to Panther Sports Profile. Our guest this week is Washington coach John Venturi. Coach, we lost this week to uh, Western Big Six Conference co-champs, Rock, Rock Island, 9-8. Yeah, it was a, uh, a great football game, and, uh, and although we lost 9-8, I feel in many respects that it was uh, our best performance of the year, Brian. I thought that our players uh, played outstanding defensively. We shut down uh, uh, a very high-powered attack, and uh, we were effective moving the football. Although we were way under our average uh, per game for the season, I thought we played outstanding offensive football, too. Had a couple of touchdowns called back and uh, had a, uh, a couple of other opportunities that we squandered because of our own mistakes. But all in all, it was a, a great football game and, and uh, uh, of course, a disappointing loss. We felt that there were some things beyond our control that uh, ultimately uh, decided the outcome of the game. Why was this such a low-scoring game? Well, I think a combination of things. Uh, uh, it was by far, uh, you know, the, the worst uh, night playing conditions-wise uh, because of the cold. However, I don't think it had a, a great effect on our execution. I thought that uh, we threw and caught the ball uh, very well, and that's generally the thing that, that is most difficult to do on a cold weather night. Uh, I think uh, a couple of penalties, a couple of our own mistakes uh, prevented us from scoring uh, our, our average. Uh, otherwise, I was quite pleased with the offense, and as I alluded to earlier, I thought our defense did a super job uh, throughout the football game. So, disappointed the fact that uh, we lost the chance for a, our first unbeaten uh, regular season in the school's history, but again, I thought uh, there were some factors involved here uh, that uh, decided the outcome uh, that were beyond our control. There were some questionable calls made by the rest. Could you tell us about that? Well, uh, after viewing the films, they weren't questionable. Uh, they were missed. Uh, and uh, however you, th you feel like uh, to be an undefeated team, you have to play above those types of things. But there were uh, two or three calls that went against us that uh, uh, were obviously missed. You know, the, the officials aren't perfect. Uh, neither are the coaches or players. Uh, some of that uh, is part of the game. Uh, however, as an official, uh, you, you can't call something you don't see, and uh, you can't ignore something that you did see. And I think a couple of times that was the case, and uh, we're, we were very bitter, uh, and our kids were bitterly disappointed. And for myself as a coach, there'll be other opportunities for perfect seasons, I hope. Uh, but for the players, uh, that's, uh, that's who I feel for the most because those seniors will never have that opportunity again. And it's one thing to lose it on the field and be outplayed, uh, but to have it taken away uh, when it shouldn't be is, 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 is very, very bad. Now take, let, take a look at the first half. Uh, uh, last Friday's Rock Island game, in which, in many respects, I thought our team played its uh, finest all-around football of the season. Uh, with some injuries to some key people, uh, we still were able to play an outstanding football game and uh, just about uh, pull off what would have been an undefeated, perfect regular season. This first drive uh, was very well executed by our offense. Uh, John Gasper keeps on the, uh, on the veer play and on short yardage. Uh, we get uh, a first down with Steve Krul carrying. This particular game we played with, uh, without the services, of course, of Carl Muller, who uh, is still recuperating from the serious burn, and also our other tailback, uh, Kenny Hopp. And what we did in this game was we were forced to play Steve Krul at tailback and Ralph Bristol at fullback. Now, here's the first touchdown run of the game. And again, uh, uh, in this game, we don't want to sound like sour grapes because we're we're certainly not ashamed of losing uh, to a team the caliber of Rock Island, but the game was, was really taken away from us. And here's the first of several uh, controversial calls. They're going to call a clip right there, and that is not a clip. That's contact in front of the defender, uh, chest to chest. That is not a clip. What's significant is that the fact that the official on the play does not make the call, but the official trailing down the sidelines some 15 to 20 yards behind the play calls the clip. And uh, officials can make uh, 
uh, mistakes to hurt you. And, and certainly you should play above uh, affecting the outcome of the game. But in this particular case, uh, you, you, there's two serious mistakes you make as an official. Uh, one is uh, uh, to not call something that is there, uh, or in this case, uh, to call something that isn't there. And positioning uh, has to be key. You have to, you have to call what you see, not what you think you saw. And this is a 52-yard run by Steve Cruel that's called back, and there's no violation or no foul involved. And we're very distraught over that. We feel like, uh, uh, you know, you don't get many opportunities for an unbeaten season, and to have it taken away uh, by the striped shirts so makes it even more disappointing. John gets sacked here on a long yardage situation. We come out on the sprint out, executed very, very well, and Teddy Moore makes a fine catch for a first down. We run the sprint draw again, the play that we had just scored on, that was called back for short yardage. And then we run the outside veer play, had a good gain, but fumble and Rock Island recovers. Now, Rock Island, as we mentioned, is an excellent football team, a 6A playoff team, uh, a team that, that is the Western Big Six champion, and in the, the previous two games coming into our game, beat six uh, A state-rated teams in East Moline and Galesburg. So we're up against uh, a great football team. Here's their quarterback keeping on the option very, very fast, uh, a manual type of team offensively with the great speed and and three or four big play threats, uh, but bigger, uh, overall bigger than Manuel. So without a doubt, uh, one of the best football teams in the state and uh, in any class, and uh, we just played a super football game all night. <coughs> nice play there by Steve Cruel, senior captain, uh, who in this game went over the 1,000-yard mark uh, and uh, for the second straight year, uh, we have a uh, player that rushed for over 1,000 yards. Last year, Ron Lance rushed for 1,006 in 10 games, and Steve has exactly 1,006 uh, in nine games. And uh, before those two guys, they're the only two in the history of the school to rush for 1,000 yards, so we're very proud of that uh, the last two years. Uh, I think that... Uh, it's important to note that uh, we've had a lot of fine football teams over the years uh, in Washington, and last year's was the first conference champion in over uh, 21 years, and then to repeat back-to-back -back championships in 81 and 82 was a great accomplishment by our players, and we're real proud of them. And several of them played on both teams, and uh, regardless of what we do from here on out, they're going to remember that for a long time, and uh, I'm sure the fans in town are appreciative of of the success we've had the past couple of years. There's a nice toss sweep play by Steve Cruel behind a block by Matt Hodges. Ralph Bristol keeps for a good gain. We really took it to him in the first half, both offensively and defensively. Uh, we controlled the ball. Uh, we had a couple of mistakes. A couple of touchdowns called back that uh, uh, certainly would have made the difference. But we still had chances to win the football game uh, despite those mistakes and despite the, the errors in officiating. Uh, because, you know, everybody, every loser can make that complaint, and we don't want to use that as an excuse. Uh, here's a well-executed play. Our bootleg play, Gasperi to Cruel for about 10 yards and a first down. Buck base play to Steve Cruel, carrying for a good gain. Again, we we're playing a couple of players out of position. Steve is normally our fullback, and he did an outstanding job at tailback. And, and uh, Ralph Bristol also did a nice job uh, playing full-time both ways for the first time all year. There's the, the trap the other way with Jeff Briggs pulling our, our guards and center, Troy Reed. Uh, uh, Todd England and Ralph Briggs did a nice job for us. Down inside uh, the five-yard line, they stack us up for a short gain on the inside base play. 
and John keeps on the outside veer, runs it in, and it's 6-0. Very alert play here by our kicker and holder. They have a good snap on the, on the PAT, but uh, a very cold night, and we drop the ball. John alertly picks it up, yell scramble, which is our automatic to our receivers to uncover now and try to get into the end zone. This is the second time this year we've done this, done it very well, and John hits Steve Cruel again for the touch, uh, for the two-point conversion, and uh, it's 8-0. on the speed option, get outside. Greg Lawless makes a big, big play. Greg uh, and Mark Wainer, uh, who have been filling in for injured players and do an outstanding job. Greg is, has been the starting cornerback since the loss of Kyle Muller three weeks ago. And Mark Wainer filled in here for the injured Kenny Hoppett linebacker and did an outstanding job. And uh, these two players uh, have, been, uh, have been in our program now and in uh, uh, as backup people primarily, and when they got their chance to start and to play full-time, they've done an outstanding job, and they, they, they both had great games, and they were voted uh, this week's uh, uh, Pizza Hut Players of the Week, Mark Wainer and uh, Greg Lawless, for outstanding games. The lead option pass. There's good coverage by Steve Ryan, almost picked off. Here's a big play here. Forced by Mark Hotzler, an early pitch. And uh, we recover the fumble with an excellent field position and an 8-0 lead. Come outside with our toss sweep play behind a block of Matt Hodges and uh, Buddy Osmond and Steve Krull picks up a first down. Inside base play to, to uh, Ralph Bristol gets short yardage. We run our scissors pass, fine throw by Gasberry, great catch and run by Steve Ryan. Outside veer play to Ralph Bristol, gets short yardage. We try a sprint draw for short yardage, and uh, We throw a touchdown pass here, but we have a little mix-up by our two running backs. Again, they're, they're normally uh, both fullbacks, and, and with the injury situation that we've had, we've been just decimated in the backfield uh, positions. We have a little bit of confusion. Uh, we really felt like we were set, but uh, I'm not going to argue with this because this one's too close to call. Uh, we'll, take, we'll take the responsibility for this miscue. Uh, even though it was a beautiful throw by John Gasper and a great catch by Gary Dester, uh, this one's going to be called back because of the illegal motion. And like I said, we're not going to argue too much about that call. We come back and try to run the middle screen. They've got it sniffed out, so John wisely throws it away in the direction of Mark Hotzler. We try a sprint out pass here, and uh, John tries to hit Teddy Moore in the end zone, uh, but just overthrows him on fourth down, and we have to give up the football. Uh, they change quarterbacks and get a short gain on first and 15. They try the speed option, and again, Greg Lawless and Mark Wainer are right there, along with Mike Morgan, to stop for a short gain. A lead option pass the other way. Calvin Fuller is right there with the receiver, breaks it up and forces them to punt on fourth down. Procedure penalty backs them up five more yards, and they punt. Mike Morgan catches it, nice little return, and uh, we've got pretty good field position again with uh, a little over three minutes to go in the half. We get into our brown set, which is four wide receivers and run a trap for four yards on first down. We try the four trap the other way, and it gets very little, sets up a third down situation. We try the sprint out, and John throws a strike to Gary Dester. Fine throw, even better catch. Gary catches the ball, as you can see, he gets both feet down inbounds, 
Just a super executed play and a great catch. Picked up the first down. Then on first and 10 from about the 25, we try the toss sweep the other way. We got a play going and just mishandled the pitch and lose possession. Uh, a very unfortunate mistake. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, you should play above the officiating mistakes. And in this particular game, we didn't. We, we had mistakes that we haven't been making, fumbles and, and, and things like that. And, uh, it really affected the outcome of the game more than uh, what the people in the striped shirts uh, did. Better job defensively that time by Ralph Bristol and Mark Dennis, stopping the quarterback for a short gain. Try the veer pass, but again, we've got excellent coverage with Lawless and Morgan, and uh, they have to punt again. We let this one bounce away, and there's not a lot of time left. Six seconds to go in the half. We do try to throw our Big Ben play. Uh, John beats the pass rush, steps up in the pocket, and uh, overthrows our two wide receivers. And the half ends. Washington 8, Rock Island nothing. Have you seen the first half? Yeah, I thought uh, that we played an excellent football game, particularly defensively. Uh, uh, we had shut down a team that uh, had been averaging close to 30 points per game and had done it uh, quite convincingly. Uh, offensively, however, we felt that, uh, you know, we were, we, were, we were happy to be ahead 8 points, but uh, you know, you kept thinking uh, in the back of your mind that uh, maybe those two touchdowns we had called back uh, were going to prove very important later on in the game. And, and uh, uh, you know, we were concerned that uh, we had played so effectively offensively and defensively, but we're only up eight points. So that was uh, what was on our mind going in at halftime. Could you tell us about the big play of the week? Yeah, the play of the week occurred uh, in our first series, a uh, 51-yard touchdown run that uh, was uh, mistakenly called back by the official. Again, uh, uh, an, obvious, uh, an obvious no call uh, turned into uh, calling the play back. Uh, but uh, we'll diagram it because uh, officials are not. It was a very successful play, very well executed play, and uh, we'll go over to the board now and diagram that. The play of the week uh, for the Rock Island-Washington game occurred in our first possession offensively. Uh, it was a 51-yard touchdown run uh, by Steve Krull, a touchdown run that was called back uh, because of a uh, clip called downfield. Uh, it's called our 48 power play. It's a basic power combination scheme block where a double-team combination block with the tackle and tight end, uh, 88 Gary Duster, 77 Mark Dennis, and then a kick-out block by our fullback on the weak side defensive end. And generally, it's a play designed, uh, you know, to pick up uh, four or five yards. But when it's blocked perfectly, like this play, particular play was, uh, it can break for the big gain. Now, Ralph Bristol applied the block on the defensive end, the kickout block, which is very critical of the play. Steve Krull, who was really playing a different position this week, the tailback position, runs what we call a sprint draw path, which is a, a lead crossover plant and then a cutback. He picked up Ralph's block, also picked up Gary and Mark's double team block, then broke it back against the grain, picked up excellent downfield blocks here by Troy Reed, our flanker uh, Teddy Moore, and also Steve Ryan, and then was escorted the last 30 yards or so uh, in for the touchdown, which gave us uh, what proved to be uh, the first touchdown of the game. And uh, 48 power was uh, this week's play of the week second half. Now let's take a look at the second half. Uh, we decided to kick out of bounds and, and spot them the ball at the 40-yard line because they've run uh, uh, back three kickoffs for touchdown this, this season and we've had trouble from time to time covering so we decided to, to take the stroke and distance penalty and, and uh, give them the ball at the 40-yard line and they jump on first down so gives them the ball at the 35 so it uh, looked like the strategy was going to strategy was going to work, and then they call us for a face mask.
several big plays in this in this game. Uh, Mark Dennis makes one right there to stop their quarterback from making a big gain. Our entire defense uh, played just a super football game. This this team uh, uh, had been averaging uh, well over 25 points per game in their conference schedule, and uh, we did a real nice job. There's good support uh, by Greg Lawless, even though he doesn't make the tackle. He forces uh, the runner to go wider than he wanted to and, and bought some time for our pursuit. Great hit there by Steve Krull. Great hit. We'll isolate again on him. And uh, Steve has just had an outstanding career for us and has, has topped it off his senior year uh, with just a spectacular season on both sides of the ball. And I truly believe that uh, uh, both Steve Krull and Mark Dennis uh, are bona fide All-State players uh, in every sense of in every sense of the word. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, they can get the kind of credit that they deserve. Good coverage there on a fourth down play, and we get the football back in, in relatively good field position. Uh, this is a very poor series for us. Uh, we don't move the ball here. Uh, I lick, and uh, we have to punt the ball. After the defense had done a real nice job to shut them down, offensively we sputtered here, and this cost us. We have a penalty here. Again, they have a very difficult time seeing the call. Now, this one is correct. John's across the line of scrimmage, but they had called two penalties, the illegal forward pass and holding. So we have to punt. And this one is very good punt by John Gasberry. We get pretty good kick coverage here, and they only get about a five-yard return. They try the veer pass. Good coverage by Mike Morgan. Nearly picked it off. They try the veer play with the quarterback keeping, and he gets good yardage. A little bit of a defensive breakdown there. They try the speed option. Good support by Calvin Fuller, and they get a short gain. Quarterback keeps on the veer. And they pick up another first down. Big, big play here by Mark Hotzler. Our tackle forces the early pitch, Ralph Bristol, and Mark stops him for a seven yard loss. Then we change the scheme a little bit. We put Steve Ryan in at defensive end, and this is a pass situation. Steve's a little bit better pass rusher, and he sacks the quarterback for an 11-yard loss. Now they've got third and in, in long situation. They try the speed option the other way. They get a good gain, but uh, they're still going to come up about 12 yards short, and now it's fourth down situation. And defense does a real nice job of coverage. Calvin Fuller makes a real heads-up play here. Rather than trying to risk an interception, he lets the receiver catch the ball, nails him right there in his tracks for a six-yard gain, but they needed 10, and so we get the ball back uh, in pretty good field position around the 24-yard line, first and 10. Another real good defensive uh, series. Come back and run the triangle pass. Great throw and catch by John Gasperi to Steve Ryan. And uh, pick up about 17 yards in the first down. Big play. Inside base play gets short yardage. Inside Veer, Gasper keeps for short yardage. Sets up a third and long situation. We go to the sprint out again. Good protection by our line. Nice throw by John Gasper and a great catch by Buddy Osmond. Gets the first down. Big play by Buddy. We run a draw play to Ralph Bristol, and Ralph pops it for 17 yards. Again, we're really moving the football now. 
our Brock base play. Steve gets about seven on first down. Fumble the ball, but we maintain possession. This is a big play here, a second and three situation. We run our scissors pass. John throws the ball to Steve Ryan, who's wide open. And uh, John did a good job of getting the pass away with a uh, defender in his face. Just a little bit better pass would allow Steve to stay on his feet and score a touchdown because they, there's nobody really around. But Steve makes a fine catch, adjustment to the ball. And we've got first and 10 at the 15. Get about three yards on first down as the quarter ends. Now, this is the touchdown we really needed to get that, that we didn't, uh, that really uh, gave Rock Island momentum and uh, gave them a real emotional lift in the fourth quarter. We try to keep play on third and about seven, and we get three of it. Sets up a fourth and four from the eight. Now, here's the big play. We call our sprint flood pass, and uh, John does a good job of getting outside. As you can see, he's probably going to have the first down made or maybe even a touchdown by keeping, but he decides to throw the ball to Steve Ryan and uh, didn't connect. And a big, big play there. We pump life into uh, Rock Island, and they come down and put together a 92-yard drive and uh, score the even-up touchdown. Big play here by their quarterback. Breaks one for 62 yards. And a big touchdown saving tackle here by Greg Lawless. Came from the other side of the field to make the tackle. And uh, the field position, the momentum we ha had uh, just moments earlier, uh, we've lost and in, in the, in, in, uh, the outlook of the game is, has changed considerably. They run the counter option play. Quarterback does a nice job. We, it looks like we're going to stop him for a loss. We miss a tackle. And instead of a loss, he takes it inside the five for a first down. They run the outside veer play. Good play by Jeff Martin and Ralph Bristol to stop it before the play even gets started. And they alertly run a quarterback sneak against our goal line defense, which was key to stopping the off tackle. So now they try for two, and they try the uh, inside veer play, and Steve Krull makes a big league tackle here. Stops it. Big, uh, big, big play by our defense. And uh, this uh, gave us a real big lift. Even though they had scored the touchdown, the great tackle on the, on the two-point play gave us a big lift. And it's 8-6. With over eight minutes to go, we get a pretty decent return here by Mike Morgan. And we begin to mount what is a pretty good drive for us. Four yards on first down to Ralph Bristol on the trap play. We run a base give to uh, Steve Krull that picks up about uh, six more and a first down. Correction, this is the, gets the first down. Steve Krull on third and two gets the first down. We come back on first and 10. And uh, Steve picks up about eight yards. And we're really starting to move the ball well. Second down play, we got a nice gain, the first down, and uh, we fumble the football. And uh, it looks like it's going to be quite a bit to overcome at this stage. But our kids uh, play some outstanding football uh, when things look at their darkest. They break one inside. Uh, just tremendous speed. I, I couldn't be prouder of the way our defense played. Uh, there was pressure on them uh, every single play because they have big play threats and they have the threat to go the entire field at any time with their speed. There's a big play. And, uh, deep into our territory with uh, another serious threat being posed. Uh, they run inside for about three yards on first down. Counter reverse, gets the ball down into the end zone, uh, but they're called for clipping. So we get a little bit of a break there.
quarterback keeps on second and long and, and makes it a third now and long, about third and ninth situation. They call timeout after we had called timeout, and now here's the big play. And uh, boy, this one, this one I'll remember uh, for as long as I coach football because this is the play that took away an undefeated season, regular season for the Panthers. Third and long, they try a counter option pass. Jeff Martin comes in, stops the quarterback. Before he can throw it, and the official is going to unbelievably call a face mask call here, and there is no face mask. We've run, run this back a hundred times at slow motion, and uh, we can't find it. It's just not there. It's, again, official uh, uh, calling something that he really didn't see. Couldn't have seen because it's not there. And uh, we recover the fumble ball. Instead of having the, the ball, uh, in our possession with two minutes to go at the 32-yard line with only one Rock Island timeout left, simply a matter of running the clock out and winning 8-6 to six and completing a regular season undefeated. Uh, they now have the ball first and goal because of the penalty uh, that was truly not a penalty. And uh, 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 this coach is going to have an opportunity for undefeated seasons, uh, hopefully, uh, for some years. Uh, but these players, uh, some of them will never get another opportunity, and that's what makes it so, uh, so sad. We do a real nice job here stopping them five plays inside the 10-yard line, and uh, with eight seconds left, they attempt a field goal. It's good, and uh, that's how the game ends with Rock Island winning at 9-8 and denying uh, the Panthers their first undefeated season uh, in the history of the school. We have time for one play, a screenplay, that we don't get off the ground. And the game ends 9-8. Very disappointing, uh, bitter loss to end the regular season. Your theme in the second half? Well, I don't think I have to make a lot of comments about the, uh, the outcome of the game. I, after viewing the film uh, several different times, it was obvious that uh, uh, the crucial call at the end of the game was, was, uh, was not the proper call. But again, football uh, officials have to make a lot of judgment calls, and, and we certainly can't blame them for the loss because we had opportunities uh, to win the game, and we didn't. Uh, you have to play above those type of things to have an undefeated season. Uh, so it was a bitter disappointment for our players. Uh, uh, but we're just hoping that uh, after it's all over, regardless of, of how far we go into the playoffs, that our players realize that uh, they had a great, great season and another championship season back-to-back -back, uh, with last year's 81 championship of the Mid-State 10 uh, is just a great accomplishment. And some of these players uh, were very instrumental in both of those championships. And, and uh, I think that uh, these two teams, the 81 and the 82 team, uh, will not be uh, forgotten for a long time in, in this town. Do you think this loss will hurt us in the state playoffs? Well, I don't know. I, you know, uh, certainly uh, the emotional uh, lag that you have following this type of loss when you lose in the last eight seconds and you lose a game that you play well enough to win and it just doesn't happen uh, can have an effect. But uh, 16 and 17 year old players uh, have a lot of re resiliency, and I think they'll just be looking forward to coming back and, and getting another opportunity to play a football game Wednesday night. Do you know what class and what team we'll be playing in the playoffs? Uh, yes, we do. We will be in 4A uh, this season. We're down from the 5A, but we have exactly the same path to follow as we did last year because some of the other schools fell into 4A. We will be hosting Champaign Central uh, in 4A, and the winner of that game will most likely play Springfield Griffin so it's the same, uh, same route that uh, we had to follow last year, even though we're in 4A. So it's really no different. It doesn't matter at this stage of the season. I think this, this game proved that uh, we're capable of playing with any football team in the state. Uh, Rock Adams is a 6A champion, and uh, I'm sure they'll do quite well as, as well. Good luck in the state playoffs, Coach. Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, that's all for Washington Sports Profile this week. Please join us next week.